Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week I've been talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in tongues, actually all of the gifts that go along with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've got these little booklets. This is 10 reasons it's better to have the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 7, that it's actually advantageous for us to have the Holy Spirit within us. It's better to have that than it is to have Jesus in His physical body with us. Most people wouldn't agree with that, but that's because we haven't fully understood the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we've got this little booklet, and then I've got another book entitled The New You and the Holy Spirit. This first half of this book is about what true salvation is. The second half of this book is about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and specifically speaking in tongues. So we've got these books. We're asking for a gift of some amount for them. And then we have the teaching on the New You and the Holy Spirit in uh, CD and DVD form and also a USB that will have the audio and video on it. Tomorrow is going to be my last day to offer these products about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is something that I could teach on a lot. And actually, I've got teaching about the Holy Spirit scattered all throughout nearly every teaching that I have. We could probably present 10 of my series here that would talk about some aspect of the Holy Spirit. But I'm just offering these. You can go to our website. You can get more information if you would like that. What I want to do now is I've already established that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is biblical. Anybody who believes in the Bible, you have to believe in this because it's just everywhere, especially in, from the resurrection of Jesus on through the rest of the New Testament. Uh, it is predominant, and the gift of speaking in tongues is mentioned often. So anybody who believes the Bible has to believe in that, but some people think, well, it passed away, and it's not for us today. I've spent the first three days of this week showing you that it still is for us today and that it is a separate experience from just being born again. If you haven't uh, accepted that, if that's new information to you, I encourage you to please go to our website or call in and get these materials because this is just imperative that you understand that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a second experience with the Lord beyond just forgiveness of sins. It doesn't diminish forgiveness of sins. It's based on that. You have to receive salvation first. You have to be born again. But I gave you yesterday four examples in the book of Acts where people were already born again, but then they had a second encounter with the Lord where they were baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke with tongues. If you haven't received that, even if you've received salvation, you need to receive this second experience where you speak in tongues. And some people think, well, speaking in tongues is just foolish. What does it accomplish? I want to address that today and share some things with you from Scripture about what speaking in tongues does. And this is by no means going to be a complete expose on it, but uh, I want to just encourage you that speaking in tongues is something that I do all of the time. Paul said he spoke in tongues more than them all, more than all the Corinthians put together and people who operate in the supernatural power of God today and see miracles happen, every one of them will claim to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People that don't uh, believe in miracles and don't see miracles happen, they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you choose. What do you want, a powerless life, or do you want one where the supernatural power of God is operating in your life? I believe most people would say they want the power of God. Well, then you're going to have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul said this in verse 1. He said, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Paul right here said we are supposed to desire these spiritual gifts. Matter of fact, if you go back to the 12th chapter, the last verse, verse 31, it says, But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Some people have taken... This and then the 13th chapter starts talking about love is superior to all of the gifts. That's the way that they interpret it. But what it's really saying is that the gifts operating in love are superior to just the gifts operating out of your own ability. 
Now, so I could spend a lot more time explaining that, but this isn't saying that love is better than the gifts. It's saying that the gifts operating in love is the way it's supposed to be. That's the reason he says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, it didn't say that charity is better than the gifts. It says that the gift operating in charity or God's kind of love is the way it's supposed to be. So anyway, in the 14th chapter, he tells us specifically to follow charity or God's kind of love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now that is really significant. When you are speaking in tongues, you aren't speaking gibberish. It isn't just, you know, unintelligible symbols. Matter of fact, that verse I've already quoted, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. That shows you that there's different kinds of tongues. There's a gift of tongues that was operative like on the day of Pentecost where they spoke in a language that was unknown to them, but the people in the audience, they heard them speaking in their known language. That's the tongues of man. But then there's also a tongue that isn't any human language. It's the language of angels. And so that's what it's talking about in 1 Corinthians 14 too. It says that no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. When you speak in tongues, you aren't just speaking gibberish. It's not just nothing. You're speaking mysteries. And boy, keep your finger there because I'm going to come back to this, but let me turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the same author. This is Paul speaking. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 2, he says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, he didn't say it didn't have wisdom. He says it wasn't man's wisdom. It wasn't enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Again, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he's talking about miraculous, dunamis power that Jesus spoke about in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We are given examples of how P, uh, uh, Paul saw people, the lame healed. He saw uh, Eutychus raised from the dead. He saw miracles. He had a... Um, snake bite him and he shook the snake off into the fire and he should have died from it, but he didn't even swell up. Nothing happened. He had the miraculous power of God working in him. And that's what he was talking about, this demonstration of the spirit and of power. And the reason he did it that way is that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So Paul was saying he wasn't using human wisdom. He wasn't just arguing people into things. He was using God's wisdom, and he was demonstrating the power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he called it hidden wisdom, the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery, is what he said. Now, in this same book, to the same people, the same author said in verse 2, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. When you're talking about praying in the Spirit, you're talking about praying in tongues. That's what it's talking about. In Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is talking about praying in tongues. And right here it says that you are speaking mysteries. And that's what Paul said he was preaching. That's where he got his revelation. Did you know that Peter, who spent three and a half years physically with Jesus when he was in, on this earth in his physical body, and he listened to Jesus preach and heard all of these things. Peter said about the apostle Paul, he said, our beloved brother Paul says some of these things that are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they also do other scriptures. Here's Peter, 
A GUY WHO SPENT THREE AND A HALF YEARS WITH JESUS SAYING THAT PAUL WAS SAYING THINGS THAT IT WAS HARD TO UNDERSTAND. WHERE DID PAUL GET THIS? PAUL DIDN'T SIT UNDER THE MINISTRY OF JESUS. HOW DID PAUL GET THIS REVELATION? HE'S CALLED THE APOSTLE TO THE GENTILES THAT HE WASN'T BEHIND PETER OR ANY OF THE OTHER PEOPLE, THAT GOD GAVE HIM A REVELATION. WHERE DID HE GET THIS? BY HIS OWN ADMISSION, HE SAID HE WAS PREACHING THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD IN A MYSTERY, AND HE SAID THAT WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU ARE PRAYING MYSTERIES. YOU KNOW, I COULD PROBABLY GO INTO A MORE DETAILED EXPLANATION AND MAYBE BE A LITTLE MORE CONVINCING IF I WENT INTO ALL THAT DETAIL, BUT LET ME JUST CUT TO THE CHASE AND SAY THAT I BELIEVE THAT THE APOSTLE PAUL, WHEN HE, AFTER HIS CONVERSION, HE WENT FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS INTO THE DESERTS OF ARABIA, AND HE WAS JUST SHUT UP WITH THE LORD FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS. NOW, HE HAD ALREADY RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. HE HAD ALREADY SPOKEN IN TONGUES. YOU CAN READ ABOUT THAT IN THE NINTH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF ACTS. AND I BELIEVE THAT WHEN HE WENT THOSE THREE AND A HALF YEARS INTO THE DESERTS OF ARABIA, HE HAD ALREADY, AS ONE OF THE LEADING RABBIS, HE HAD ALREADY LEARNED HUGE AMOUNTS OF PORTIONS OF THE SCRIPTURE AND WHAT HE WAS DOING WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES AND ASKING GOD FOR REVELATION, AND GOD GAVE HIM REVELATION ABOUT THE GRACE OF GOD, ABOUT THE NEW COVENANT, AND HOW THAT THE NEW COVENANT SUPERSEDED THE OLD COVENANT, AND ALL OF THE THINGS THAT ARE WRITTEN IN HIS EPISTLES, I BELIEVE IT CAME THROUGH PRAYING IN TONGUES. I'VE SAID THIS BEFORE, THAT SALVATION IS LIKE HAVING THIS WELL DOWN INSIDE OF YOU WITH ALL OF THE WISDOM OF GOD. YOU'VE GOT THE MIND OF CHRIST. YOU'VE GOT A SPECIAL ANOINTING, AN UNCTION FROM THE HOLY ONE. YOU KNOW ALL THINGS THAT YOU'VE BEEN RENEWED IN KNOWLEDGE AFTER THE IMAGE OF HIM THAT CREATED YOU. ALL OF THIS IS IN YOU, BUT IT'S it's GOT TO BE DRAWN OUT. AND IT'S LIKE SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS THE BUCKET THAT YOU STICK DOWN INSIDE OF THIS WELL AND DRAW THIS WISDOM OF GOD OUT. AND SO I BELIEVE THAT THE APOSTLE PAUL WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES OVER THE SCRIPTURES THAT HE ALREADY KNEW VERY WELL, AND GOD BEGAN TO CONNECT THE DOTS AND GAVE HIM A REVELATION, AND THAT'S WHERE HE GOT THIS REVELATION THAT IS RECORDED IN ALL OF HIS EPISTLES. SPEAKING IN TONGUES WAS AN IMPORTANT PART OF IT, AND AGAIN, IT SAYS IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14 AND IN VERSE 18, HE SAYS, I THANK MY GOD I SPEAK WITH TONGUES MORE THAN YE ALL. SEE, HE WAS A TEXAN, MORE THAN Y'ALL. AND SO HE SAID HE SPOKE WITH TONGUES MORE THAN ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE PUT TOGETHER. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. WE DON'T KNOW HOW MANY PEOPLE WERE IN THAT CHURCH, BUT HE SAYS, I SPEAK IN TONGUES MORE THAN ALL OF YOU PUT TOGETHER. DID YOU KNOW THAT THE PERSON WHO WROTE HALF OF THE BOOKS OF THE NEW TESTAMENT SPOKE IN TONGUES MORE THAN AN ENTIRE CHURCH MEMBERS ALL PUT TOGETHER? THIS CAME THROUGH SPEAKING IN TONGUES. SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS ONE OF THE WAYS THAT YOU DRAW THIS WISDOM THAT GOD PLACES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IT'S HOW YOU DRAW IT OUT. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. YOU KNOW, I'M SPEAKING TO A POTENTIAL OF SIX BILLION PEOPLE AROUND THE WORLD CAN WATCH THIS TELEVISION PROGRAM. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT OUT OF THOSE SIX BILLION PEOPLE, WE DON'T KNOW HOW MANY WATCH, BUT THERE'S CERTAINLY MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF PEOPLE THAT ARE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT AT THIS SECOND. AND OUT OF THOSE POTENTIAL MILLIONS, THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE WHO YOU HAVE RESPONDED TO THE LORD TO THE DEGREE THAT YOU'VE GOTTEN BORN AGAIN. IF YOU WERE TO DIE, YOU WOULD GO TO HEAVEN. YOUR SINS ARE FORGIVEN. BUT YOU DON'T HAVE THIS BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND YOU DON'T SPEAK IN TONGUES. AND WHAT I'M SHARING WITH YOU IS BRAND NEW INFORMATION, AND YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT TO DO WITH IT. I'M TELLING YOU THAT YOU NEED TO TAKE THE WITNESS OF THE WORD OF GOD. YOU NEED TO TAKE THE WITNESS OF THE MAN WHO WROTE HALF OF THE BOOKS OF THE NEW TESTAMENT WHO SAID HE SPOKE WITH TONGUES MORE THAN THEM ALL. YOU NEED TO TAKE MY PERSONAL TESTIMONY. YOU NEED TO TAKE THE TESTIMONY OF SO MANY OTHER PEOPLE. THE VAST, VAST, VAST MAJORITY OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROGRAM ARE WATCHING ON A TELEVISION STATION OR A NETWORK OF STATIONS THAT THE PEOPLE WHO STARTED THOSE ARE ALL PEOPLE WHO ARE BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT AND SPEAK IN TONGUES. THOSE ARE THE ONES WHO CONTROL THE VAST MAJORITY. I WOULD SAY 90%, PROBABLY MORE THAN THAT, 95% OF ALL CHRISTIAN BROADCASTING IS BEING DONE BY PEOPLE WHO HAVE RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND YOU CAN SEE THAT THE PEOPLE THAT ARE ON FIRE FOR GOD 
are people that have had a second encounter with the Lord beyond just forgiveness of sins, that they have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes speaking in tongues. And if you don't have this, you need it. Praise God. And I know every time I talk like this, somebody will come up, do I have to speak in tongues to have the baptism? No, you don't have to speak in tongues. You get to speak in tongues. You know, it's like a pair of trousers. I guess I could get a pair of jeans and cut one leg out of it and just have one leg <laughs> covered. I guess you could do it that way, but why would you do that? You got two legs. Why wouldn't you receive both legs in a pair of trousers? It's the same thing. I guess you could have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I'm not speaking in tongues right now because it wouldn't benefit you if I was speaking in an unknown tongue. But I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. I guess you could be baptized in the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues, but why would you want that? This is something that throughout the Bible, throughout the book of Acts, when they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't even have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to go to heaven. You can still go to heaven without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you'll probably get there quicker because you aren't going to have power to be able to overcome sickness or disease, and you're going to die of something early. So yeah, you can go to heaven without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I will say this, you can't live a victorious life without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that's where this power comes upon you, and you need this ability to speak in tongues. The Bible says that when you speak in an unknown tongue, let me just keep reading here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 3. It says, But he that prophesies speaketh unto man to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. The word edify means to promote spiritual growth or to build up spiritually. That's what the word means if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance. And it says that when you speak in an unknown tongue, you are building up yourself spiritually. You are promoting spiritual growth. Speaking in tongues is one of the most important things you can do to promote spiritual growth. It's not a substitute for the Word of God, but it will add to it, and it will make the Word of God come alive. Matter of fact, let me just give this testimony. I've been trying to emphasize that in every instance in the book of Acts, when they received the Holy Spirit, they spoke with tongues. And so we often say that speaking in tongues is one of the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. I would disagree with some Pentecostals who say it's the only evidence or it's the immediate evidence. I think it should be, but you know, in my own personal case, I received this baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I didn't speak in tongues immediately. That's because I was a Baptist and I'd been taught that this was of the devil. And I was afraid of speaking in tongues. And so I received this tremendous encounter with the Holy Spirit, just like Finney. It was like waves of liquid love flowing over me. But it was, uh, it was over three and a half years before I spoke in tongues. And that's because I'd been taught against it. And as I got into the Word and got to reading and read about this, I found out that that was for us. And when I finally let down my denominational barriers and accepted that speaking in tongues was still something for us, immediately I began to start speaking in tongues. So I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues, but you should. And I can say this, that when I finally pressed on in and started speaking in tongues, that the experience I'd had three and a half years before just went to a brand new level. Speaking in tongues, again, is like a bucket that you stick down into this well of everything that God has placed in us, and it's how you draw things out. And so speaking in tongues is an important part. And for those who say you don't have to speak in tongues, you're taking the wrong approach. It's not what you have to do. It's what you get to do. And it is a powerful, powerful experience that God gives us. And just like this verse right here, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, when you speak in an unknown tongue, you edify yourself. You build up yourself. You promote spiritual growth. There has been times that really negative things have happened to me, and I've started to be discouraged. I've started to be fearful. I've started to lose my hope, just like I'm sure all of you have. We live in a fallen world, and negative things happen to us all. 
AND I'VE HAD THOSE THINGS START TO ME, BUT SINCE I'VE RECEIVED THIS BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND SPEAK IN TONGUES, MAN, ONE OF THE THINGS I WILL DO IS ANY TIME I START HAVING NEGATIVE THINGS COME AT ME, I START SPEAKING IN TONGUES BECAUSE I BUILD UP MYSELF SPIRITUALLY. I PROMOTE SPIRITUAL GROWTH. THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT 1 CORINTHIANS 14, 4 SAYS. AND I'LL START SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND IT'S JUST LIKE FLIPPING A SWITCH. IT'S JUST LIKE TURNING ON A GENERATOR, A DYNAMO, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN I START giving, GETTING ENCOURAGED AND BUILT UP. DID YOU KNOW IT'S BEEN ABOUT 50 YEARS, MORE THAN 50 YEARS SINCE I'VE BEEN DEPRESSED. AND I'VE HAD A LOT OF DEPRESSING THINGS HAPPEN IN MY LIFE, BUT WHEN THOSE THINGS COME, I START PRAYING IN TONGUES, AND IT TURNS ON THIS POWER ON THE INSIDE OF ME, AND IT BUILDS ME UP. I'M NOT SAYING THAT I DON'T EVER HAVE DEPRESSING THINGS HAPPEN, BUT I'M SAYING I HAVEN'T LET DEPRESSION WIN OVER ME IN OVER 50 YEARS BECAUSE I SPEAK IN TONGUES, AND IT BUILDS ME UP, AND IT PROMOTES SPIRITUAL GROWTH. BOY, IF YOU'RE LISTENING, WITH YOUR HEART INSTEAD OF JUST THOSE EARS THAT ARE ON THE SIDE OF YOUR HEAD, IF YOU'RE LISTENING WITH YOUR HEART, THIS IS SOMETHING THAT YOU NEED. YOU NEED THIS ABILITY TO PROMOTE SPIRITUAL GROWTH, TO EDIFY YOURSELF, TO BUILD YOURSELF UP SPIRITUALLY. WE ALL NEED TO BE ENCOURAGED. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER ONE TIME I WAS MINISTERING AT A MINISTER'S CONFERENCE, AND I WAS TALKING ABOUT THESE VERY THINGS, THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND I WAS SPEAKING TO MINISTERS, AND MANY OF THEM CAME LIMPING INTO THAT CONFERENCE, AND I WAS TELLING THEM, I SAID, LOOK, I'VE PASTORED CHURCHES. I UNDERSTAND THE REJECTION OF PEOPLE AND PEOPLE TRYING TO DESTROY YOUR MINISTRY AND YOUR THING, AND I SAID, THERE ARE REAL PROBLEMS. I GET THAT. I APPRECIATE THAT. BUT THEN I TURNED AROUND AND I SAID, REALLY, WE HAVE NO EXCUSE FOR BEING DEPRESSED BECAUSE YOU CAN PRAY IN TONGUES AND EDIFY YOURSELF. OR AS IT SAYS IN JUDE CHAPTER 1, VERSE 20, BUT YOU, BELOVED, BUILDING UP YOURSELVES ON YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH, PRAYING IN THE HOLY GHOST. KEEP YOURSELF IN THE LOVE OF GOD. WE HAVE THE POWER OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND THERE REALLY IS NO EXCUSE FOR US BEING DISCOURAGED. THERE ARE REASONS FOR US BEING DISCOURAGED, BUT THERE'S NOT AN EXCUSE. IF YOU HAVE THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND CAN SPEAK IN TONGUES, IT'S JUST LIKE FLIPPING A SWITCH, TURNING ON THE POWER, AND THE LIGHTS COME ON. THE DEPRESSION LEAVES. THE DARKNESS FLEES WHEN THE LIGHT COMES ON. I WANT TO THANK YOU FOR WATCHING OUR YOUTUBE CHANNEL AND THE PROGRAMS THAT WE HAVE AVAILABLE, AND I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT YOU CAN GET THE MATERIALS THAT WE'VE OFFERED. ALSO, I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO LIKE OUR PROGRAM AND SUBSCRIBE TO WHAT WE'RE DOING. WE HAVE A LOT OF MATERIAL, AND I BELIEVE IT'LL BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. SO THANK YOU FOR BEING A PART OF IT. GOD BLESS YOU.